Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. In the previous episode, we attempted to do a sample return mission from high Earth orbit, really, and and it didn't quite work out, and it mainly failed because of the situation with our communication satellites. So the first thing I want to do is replace the one satellite that isn't working, which is Uragity, and I'm contemplating whether to add an extra antenna to this. Uh, perhaps one of these, just sort of like, let's see, yeah, uh, let, let's say like this. Uh, it's a bit unbalanced, but it should be doable uh, given the low mass of this particular antenna. And let's see how much it changes our delta V, by about 100. I don't think that's, that's uh, going to cause a problem. It might cause a problem in terms of balance, but... Oh, I, I wanted to check whether the RCS versus the reaction wheel... Oh, the reaction wheel is only 0 0.015, so that's not bad. That's a lot less than the, than the RCS ports that I've been using. Uh, I've been using... which ones? I thought there was one called Plus or something like that. Oh, this one, yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, four of these is way more than one of the reaction wheels. Speaking of which, uh, maybe we should fix the situation here. This is all unnecessary then, huh? So, we're gonna have an advanced, slightly advanced satellite in uh, the Uragity position. Yeah, see, already the Delta V is much better. And once we've got the those off, we can possibly add more solar panels and also empty this tank. This doesn't need hydrazine anymore. Ah, look at that, that Delta V go up. So, no hydrazine necessary. Little reaction wheel. Well, I mean, that does mean that we won't be able to reposition it, though. Do we want to be able to reposition it? Um, no, probably not. Uh, if it deviates, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like they're in a perfect, uh, perfect uh, geostationary or anything like that orbit. Now, let me see the batteries. 0 0.015, 0 0.012, 0 0.002, sorry. Um, yeah, let's get better batteries on. So, Uragity will go from being our most troublesome satellite to our most advanced satellite. Hmm. Maybe these. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have two of these. Uh, yeah, angle snap. Yes, I'm going over there clicking even though I don't need to. Alright. And... <laughs> I'll use the X key. Alright. Here we go. Uh, slip up here. Oh, that doesn't look good. And let's sneak in some solar panels. Mm. And that will largely solve the old Uragity problem where we didn't have solar panels. Well, actually, it was pointing directly at the sun, so that was it. That looks okay. Uh, I'll put one solar panel on the top, just for uh, safety's sake. Just one will do. Okay, so this will be our advanced satellite for Uragity. And so... Let's say, God, I don't remember how to spell Uragity. I think that's that was it. Uh, so we'll call it Uragity Advanced. Oh, maybe we should add a little bit of control, huh? Let's see. What what were the what sort of official 
I guess this quad... No. Oh, it doesn't seem to... Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, no, this uses monopropellant, so it's no good. We need ones that uh, use... Uh, what are uh, the real fuels? Ah, heck. I, I don't think we need to reposition it. Let's just go. Oh, no, that's not true, is it? We, we, we might want uh, the... Uh, I used uh, RCS to get the 3-hour period. Okay, so cancel that idea. I do need RCS ports. Uh, But we don't need to carry as much uh, fuel. We don't need as much hydrazine. So let's say 100 units of hydrazine. Okay, that seems to be a happy medium. All right, without further ado, let's uh, pack this up and get it launched. Where's my fairing? Oh, there we go. Mm, perhaps extend this a little bit higher. All right, your agony advance, save and oh, fix staging. Save and launch. Up, we've got here, but uh, hold that thought though. We do need to launch at the right time to get into a uragity position. So where is uragity? Uh, Oh, uh, right overhead. Uh, let's switch to it. Uh-oh. Okay, well, let's... Uh, I guess we'll have to revert flight and go through the tracking station because it's not letting me switch vessels. So I'm going to revert to vehicle assembly and then go to the tracking station. So what we're looking for with uh, Uragity is... Um, let, let's just wait until it's a whole number of days. So, off we go. So let me give myself like five minutes to do the launch. Well, maybe fewer than that. Let's see, where are we? Yeah, okay, this makes sense. When you think about uh, how we launch and how it'll take time to get to the 250 kilometer periapsis from uh, KSC, this is probably the right time to launch. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, we also have to have orbital period, so we'll need the orbit info. This one still has an orbital period of three hours. All nice and neat. All right, uh, maybe a few more minutes ahead. Okay, now let's uh, go back to Space Center and launch the Uragity Advanced. Okay, so unfortunately a nighttime launch, but hopefully all will go well. SAS is on, throttle is up, and yeah, we're good to go. Launch. So we've got a lot to do in this episode. I want to fix the, the bad commsat situation up. I want to get other satellites up, including one in geostationary orbit. So let me, uh, well, I'll catch up with you once I get this thing into a decent position, unless something goes wrong. Okay, second stage lit. I'm gonna get the, oh, I can't really see whether I have, okay, it looks like the antenna's out. Gonna activate the uh, number two antennas as well. Uh, barely see anything here. Yep, looks like they're poking out, so it's all right. How are we doing? Um, <clears throat> looks good. I mean, uh, if this is Uragity here, yeah, this orbit. I think that's the one we're gonna match. 
Looks like we're gonna get the apolapses much higher for some reason. Let me try and limit that, but this is getting wrong. Very badly wrong. Okay, well we're getting to three hours, but boy is this not the orbit I was looking for. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong thing! That's why I've got a... Oh, crud. I'm looking at time to apoapsis when I should be looking at orbital period. Oh, man. No, nope, there's no way we're gonna get this uh, this right. Ah, uh, looking at the wrong number. That's all. That's the whole sum total of this problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to deorbit the little thing and try again. So bring periapsis back down. Okay, it's now got to crash into the surface, all our hydrazine is spent, and right, so allow me to just... Okay. Now, Space Center. Ah, uh, silly, silly little uragity. Alright, so let's... After that little uh, looking at the wrong number fail, let's time warp again. Okay. <sighs> if only it would just accidentally get some some light from the sun. But anyway, uh, let's launch. Okay, here we go once again, and once again I'll see you once we get into orbit because we've got a lot of other things to do, unless I make a mistake again. Alright, so off we go. Okay, first stage is away, and we continue. Antenna's out. Keeping my eye on orbital period this time. Orbital period. Not time to have lapses. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Ah, periaps is still not very good. Um, maybe I should use the second relight on this stage in order to fix that. Uh, okay, we have some ability to turn this thing. Not really the orbit. That would be best. Oh, uh, wait, uh, uh, isn't this Uragadi's orbit here? Okay, let's just turn to match that then. Where is Uragadi? Oh, it was back there. Huh. Okay, well, uh... I'm probably not going to be able to do all of this burn. Anyway. But any little periapsis will be helpful. So. Oh, is fuel unstable? Yeah, I think fuel is unstable. I can't do this burn. Okay. So let's let's just use RCS to fix this. Let me just make sure. Was it fuel? Yeah, fuel flow was unstable, and there's no way I have to fix that. Well, I guess I could spin it, but I don't think the the force of the reaction will be enough to spin it at a decent rate. All right, so all that is off. Let's turn. 
Let's just point pro grade, but burn retrograde a bit. And uh, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll burn retrograde here. And once we get to uh, Apoapsis, I will deal with the prograde portion. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, to boost my periapsis up. So, let me burn like this for a bit. And even have a shorter than three hours, because we need to be able to get our periapsis up. Okay, so let's go with this. Now, where's the sun? Okay, let's not be pointing directly at the sun. Let's get a definite sideways. Oh, actually, let's go north south. That's usually good. Okay, and we don't need both antennae out. So we can close this one. Actually, you know what? I don't think I have enough to run the big antenna. I put it on, but I don't think I have enough electric charge for it. Well, maybe. I mean, the electric charge looks like it's uh, much better than it was on the standard TDRS satellites. The non-advanced. Okay, so... <sighs> this does not look like the same orbit at all. That sucks. How did we get so far off anyway? It's it's probably because of the mass has changed, the whole dynamics of this rocket has changed. When I put all the other ones up, they were all in the same sort of thing. And since I did it on the same day, I probably used the same launch profile. I really should have made note of that launch profile. Well, so there's going to be a bit of a inadequacy in our system yet, but... Let's just deal with this one like this. At least it gives us some hope for stuff. Okay, we are roughly at our apoapsis. Now let's turn to prograde and boost our periapsis up. And then I'm gonna call this satellite kosher even though it's not in the right orbit. Okay, well yeah, let me go to periapsis and then maybe I should have a higher periapsis anyway. Well, there's a limit to how much of that I can do without running out of RCS to fix it down there. Alright, so I uh, headed to Periapsis now in order to uh, bring it down to three hours. Oh, we might not have a uh, connection. Uh, yeah, we're about to lose connection, so let me... Let me try and bring it to three hours here. Come on. No, I'm not going to take... Uh, just one little touch of the RCS gives me an extra one second. Oh darn, come on. Really? And there's no fixing that. Okay. Well, let's see how this whole situation works out. Well, it's definitely charging up, so no problem there. It's just not quite in the right place. It's actually in one of the 45 degree angle positions that uh, would help to complete this system. Okay. 
Well, uh, let me point north-south like I said I should. And that means this way. And double check the orientation. So let's go to where the sun shines. We could probably get a few more solar panels working. Oh, we've got no connection. Okay, well this is fine. We've got enough solar panels facing it. That's all right. Okay, well now the next thing probably should get rid of that. Um, let me put a geostationary satellite up. I definitely want to try that out in this episode. So before anything else, a geostationary satellite which will communicate uh, directly to the KSC and be right above it. All right, so let's go to the VAB and put that together. Now I'm gonna take as my model the High Toss Three. And we're going to take a good look at that now. We're going to need a lot more solar panels than this did. So let's add some more of that. We aren't going to need parachutes. We aren't going to need this whole silly situation. Or the heat shield and decoupler. We will need this. But we won't need this tank. Okay. Hmm. Perhaps this can be slipped here. Be a little bit less obtrusive. Uh, we don't need a little battery pack on top. Hmm. Solar panels. Let's get a few more solar panels. Maybe I should just use symmetry at this point. Instead of putting them one at a time. Ah, no, let's just get on with it. I want to pull all the solar panels off after putting them on so neatly. So the goal is for this little rocket to do the burn at, at our apoapsis in order to circularize the orbit. Maybe I should have another one of these on the other side. So I communicate with uh, other missions. That seems fair. Let's let's put it higher. Let's put them both higher. Just suppose we have enough electric charge. Hmm, how much electric charge does it take? Let's see, um, 0.08 charge per second. How much do they provide? Um, well, that's a little bit over 1.01 uh, .01 per second. That's close to 0.02 per second. Well, I think powering two antennas would be tough with this. But let's try it out. Let's let's go with this. So this will be G stat one. Let's call it. What's our delta V on this? Oh that's great. No worries. Um I would like the this stage to get us to orbit at least. It does well I mean I guess it doesn't really matter. Well Seems like a lot of it seems to be in this tank now. 
the as far as our uh, well, I guess that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with that. Let's try it out. Okay, so... Let me just make sure stuff is action grouped. Okay, there's a Commutron. As long as there's one Commutron action grouped, I'm, o I'm okay. Alright, so let's try and get this into geostationary orbit. That is the plan. Alright. Okay, well this time we get to launch in daylight. SAS on. Throttle up. And we, we should have the orbit info here. That's probably very useful in this case. Alright, let's go. Well, the key here is, of course, I need to make sure that the apoapsis is above the KSC once the whole world rotates and everything. So, so that's a little bit. Uh, obviously, we've done a few tests uh, with the um, with the sample return missions and all that to see where exactly I need to go. But it's still not uh, not gotta be precise. So you note that there was uh, even on those missions there was a narrow window during which we were in communication with the KSC, and we were hardly above the KSC directly. There was only the only time I actually got directly above the KSC was when I pushed the orbit way past the geostationary position. So there's probably gonna have to be some adjusting to do. And it's because of those tests that I know that I, I really need to be angled a little bit high here like this. If I tried to go um, flat, go horizontal, and then, I mean, it, I'd still be able to push my apoapsis to 35,786 kil kilometers. But in that case, I'll probably get out of range of the KSC. I wouldn't even be anywhere close to where the KSC is. So that's not going to be any good. So the key is to maintain communication and keep it uh, as close to above the KSC as possible. And even now we're going to be deviating from that, but uh, hopefully we'll be within a range that will allow me to correct it. Okay, coming up on second stage burnout. All right, that's it. Okay, looks like we're good to go. And light. Now this one can throttle. Yeah, well, and that's very important because I want to get closer to our uh, our intended apoapsis than simply... I mean, obviously, RCS would have been helpful, and maybe I should have packed that as well. If we really wanted to get this precise, RCS would have been essential. But I am content to getting it just close. Okay, uh, so 35,786, is that right? Yeah, uh, I think so. I don't know what the final digit is supposed to be, though. Alright. Let me just uh, optimistically plot the maneuver here to circularize. Might be interesting to see it in context of the moon's orbit. I think that averages out to the right number or so. Alright. I mean, we're not going to hit that precisely anyway. 
looks like we have enough Delta V. Uh, dropping that heat shield does help quite a lot. Now, what we need to do is we need to have one of these antennas activated and targeting mission control. Okay, I'll uh, leave the other one not activated. Where is the sun? Seems to be missing which really dim light is the sun. Is it right overhead? Well, the, this whole side of the planet, let me see. Uh, okay, where are we? So sort of like that. Should be close to the horizon then, right? I just want to angle my antenna, uh, my uh, solar panels towards it, but I can't even see where the sun is. Can't imagine how I'm missing it. Uh, well, uh, I've I've always said north south was a good thing, so let's let's just go north south. And we are in sunlight, so we can turn about our axis, and where we are recharging would be correct. There we go. Okay, well this is <laughs> using uh, multiple satellites to uh, communicate. This isn't a direct line. So what we're going to need to do is time this a bit. Because, let's say, uh, okay, this custom info window is in my way right now. Um, well, Yeah, how many hours is that? I mean, it's probably uh, between five and six hours that we're off. So our what what I want for my orbital period would be I'm five or six hours. Oh, I have to boost boost beyond. I have to boost beyond. Uh, yeah, I have to boost past in order to. But uh, let's 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 not do it in one orbit then, because that'll be quite far past. Oh, this is gonna be tough. All right, let's find a way to point towards a prograde vector. I I have no idea how we're connecting through. Well, Dragon events. Okay, well now we're connecting direct, but. Dragon Advanced's uh, long-range dish isn't even open, so I don't know what what we're connecting through. Okay, well, a few more minutes. Uh, turn to apoapsis, yeah. All right, well, let's. Okay, yeah. So maybe we should go faster and actually lap it? I don't know. That could be a tricky way to go. Let me just try this first. Seems weird, but I just want to try it out and see if it... Uh, ends up being good. Uh, it's amazing that we kept our Apple apps this nice and neat. Alright. Yeah. Okay. And one more time around. Let's see where we are at. Okay, I think I'm gonna be over it, or close to over it. Yeah. Okay, uh, explaining what I just did, um, I made myself uh, 
nine hours faster and that took two orbits so that's 18 hours remember I was six hours off and uh, that was six hours ahead but if I pretended to be 18 hours behind then two orbits that were each uh, nine hours faster than the Earth rotates uh, would be enough. And so that was the calculation that I made in order to get this orbital period, and it looks like it worked. Uh, I, except I, the idea that it was six hours was an approximation, right? It was somewhere between five and six hours that we were off. Well, that's about as close as it's going to get. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this particular burn that perfect, but let's see. Actually, this far out from Earth slash Kerbin, there's really low chance that this thing is going to be running out of uh, electric charge. Let me move this custom info window down here. Okay, so here we go. And we've got our burn in one hour and 30 odd minutes. Okay, here we go. Oh, things are drifting off of it. Hmm, that looks about right as far as the average is concerned. Yep, I'm, I'm going to call that close enough. I forget what the exact number for the orbital period needs to be. I know it's 23 hours and 56 minutes and something, but I forget the seconds. I always forget the seconds. Uh, and without RCS, I don't think I can adjust the apoapsis and periapsis any more precisely than I have right now. So, we're going to leave it here. Oh, by the way, you might be wondering why the orbital period is in 24 hours. The other four minutes are due to the adjustment based on Earth's rotation around the Sun, right? Because uh, the angle with the Sun is changing a little bit every day. That angle is equivalent to the extra four minutes. So the 24 hours puts the Sun in the same position, uh, if you will, uh, every day. But that's not the same as how long it takes the Earth to rotate. The Earth rotates on its axis uh, 23 hours and 56 minutes so good thing to keep in mind uh, except I really wish I had kept in mind how many seconds it was so that I could get that even more precise but now we have a geostationary satellite and it's got all the amenities like to charge plenty of antenna arrays yep alright so that's gonna help out a bit Especially when these uh, get up to their apoapses, they can talk to it. Now, perhaps we should get one at a 90 degree angle? Or perhaps I should get one... Let me try and get something into a uh, high polar orbit that could help. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's get something into a high polar orbit around 12 kilometers, uh, 12,000 kilometers and make it circular. Let's circularize it at a, uh, with a six hour period or something like that. That might be interesting. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, go back to the VAB. Well, actually, let's wait till the VAB is in the daytime side. There's no reason to launch at night. Sometime or another, I'll check what the actual orbital period of the uh, what the actual orbital period should be, and based on that, fix things up. Make sure that we get that right. If it's slow right now, it might fall behind quite a lot per day. I mean, uh, uh, over the accumulation of time. So, yep, I think we can go back to the VAB and launch one more little satellite. Actually, honestly, I think it's fair to just launch this satellite, not, uh, not a different satellite. So, so let's call it, uh, instead of GSTAT, uh, Polestar 1. I wonder, uh, it seems to me that that might have been used for 
uh, for an actual satellite. But, but yeah, I'll go with it. Pull star one. And without further ado, let's uh, get it up there. Okay, so the priority with this is to keep it within the 12,000 kilometer range, which will allow it to communicate with all the other satellites using the Communitron 16. So, throttle up, and we're going for a polar orbit. Uh, maybe we should go south. I hardly ever go south. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, does it make sense? It shouldn't make any difference. We did throw one north. So maybe we should throw this one south. Uh, no, actually, having a converse like that doesn't really help, does it? No, it doesn't. It'd be better to have it chasing the one north in a different... Uh... So let's see, where is... Oh, uh, wait. Uh, the, it's, it's actually pretty good. It's at a 90 degree angle right now. Well, not quite 90. Maybe 60. So I'll be going down. Eh, let's just go north. Alright, so everything is ready and let's go. Okay, all good. Antenna should be out, though I haven't decoupled the fairing in order to check. I have pushed the hotkey so that our Commutron 16 should be activated. Okay, so we're, we're in orbit on the second stage. Uh, let me actually throttle down and then decouple. Okay, we've got our little antenna out, and, well, let's give it a little bit of a short, well, how many relights do it, it I forget if this one is configured to engine igniter, I thought engine igniter was configured for the stock lights pack, but this one apparently doesn't have ignitions on it, anyway, um, yeah, let, let's ignite this engine, and boost a little bit, it is configured for re real fuels, at least, um, so, what we want to do is our main dish, our big dish, should connect to the G-STAT. But the, the G-STAT one will have to be occupied. Well, anyway, uh, nothing for it. Let's just uh, uh, give it uh, the idea that it should think about G-STAT a little bit. Um, otherwise, most of the connections will be working through all the other satellites that we have here. As you can see, it's got to be high, so it should be able to communicate with all of them. And I want to get this circular. So, we can do a number of adjustments. Uh, I think we've got plenty of uh, Delta V for that. So, why don't we get to apoapsis, hope that we're still in communication. Uh, judging from this, we should be, because we're going to get to, well, an hour and 30 minutes, it might be a bad situation. But we're in orbit, so, you know, we can fix it again. We're not going to be crashing back into the surface or anything like that. So let's say tentatively something along those lines. Electric charge is fine. Okay. All right, so. Still connected. Okay, still connected. So I'm just trying for a round number. I guess six hours would be best. Oh, 
Not necessarily, though. I mean, these polar orbit ones still need to be like that. Okay, well, we're still connected, so let's just go. Hmm. Perhaps we could get a little bit more of a circular orbit. Let's see. Again, not necessary at all, but just for aesthetic sake. Okay, six hours. All right, don't need this anymore. And let's see, where's the sun? There's the sun, but well, we'll just uh, align north-south and leave it at that. Should be okay. Alright, so we've got another satellite going like that. And that'll help patch up some of the holes in this whole thing. Alright, so I think we've got a few fixes in order here. And so the next thing I want to do is try to sample return mission again. And hopefully time it a little bit better so that they're not all in there at their periapses when I try and land it. Well, actually, you know what? They probably have to be pretty low, though. They can't be at their apoapsis when I try and land it because the antenna range for the for the one that's automatically open, the one that won't snap off, is um, is five thousand kilometers. So they can't be more than five thousand kilometers up. Uh, all sorts of things to think about. All right. So, but the point is, uh, we've we've got. Uh, We've got something a little bit better this time, and we'll see if it actually improves our results. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.